Hey everyone, this is Josh from Adirondack Adventures. And if you've been watching my channel, you realize that I'm a big fan of the single portage. It's always nice when you're able to transport your canoe and all your gear in one single trip without having to make additional trips back to pick up loose items or things that should have just been attached on your first trip. So today I'm actually taking a break from paddling. I'm doing a little gear maintenance and uh, I'm going through my system to make sure that it's still functioning properly. There's nothing redundant. Everything has a purpose and it's properly considered because uh, without a, a good method or a good system for portaging, I think it just makes it much more difficult. So today I'm going to go through my entire system, which consists of three basic components in my opinion. It's one of them is my homemade yoke. And if you haven't seen uh, uh, the video I made about my homemade yoke, I made a specific video about that. Take a look at that because without that, I don't see how single portaging my Old Town pack is even possible. Uh, the second thing is how I'm wearing my packs and the packs that I use, I think make it essential for proper balanced cargo and to just make it as comfortable as possible to portage the canoe. And the third component I think is essential is just the gear that I've selected. So first, let's just take a look at my boat as if I just carried it to the next water body and I'm just about to break it down for my next paddle. This is my boat as if I was just finishing a portage between water bodies. And I figured it would be useful to take a look at what's going on here and break it down one by one so that you can see what I'm using, where it's attached, what it's attached with, and I'll try to explain to you why I'm doing that. So let's break down the yoke first and get that out of the way. very easy. I'd say the next thing to point out here is I have my PFD just firmly attached with a bungee cord. I love bungee cords. They provide many functions beyond just attaching to your boat when I get to camp. They all have a purpose. So it's one of those multi-function items that weighs basically nothing. Underneath my PFD is my waterproof map case and my map. So when I'm portaging, they just go right there on my seat, tucked away nicely. When I get back to the next water body, it's ready to go. Uh, I don't have to pull it out of a pack or put it in a pack. I have some super high absorbent towels that I always paddle with that keep water out of my boat, keep things clean. They used to call these sham wows. I don't know what they're called anymore, but I, I love these things. These are great. They're easily tucked away behind the wooden dowel of my seat. The next thing here is, I guess, my paddle and my fishing rod. And both of them are tucked away very nice and neatly. And what I use to attach these, and I can't uh, swear by these more, but basically these are just Velcro strips. I buy a roll of Velcro. They're like 20 feet long and I just cut them into sections to use them for whatever I want. These things are so money for attaching things to your boat, attaching things to your pack. I love these things. They're so easy. When my paddle's out and I'm paddling, I attach my packs and different items to the floor, to the seat, so that if I were able to dump my boat or unexpectedly capsize, all my gear will still be attached to my boat and it would just be a matter of dragging my boat to shore and I wouldn't have to scramble for all my gear floating away or lose things to the bottom of the pond. So these Velcro ties come in handy in many different ways, just like my bungee cords. Pull the fishing rod out. Okay. My paddle very easily comes out. Put that to the side here. The last thing, really, I don't know if the camera can see it, but is my tackle box in there, okay? I just attach my tackle box using 12-inch gear ties, like those big, twisty ties which come in all different sizes and colors but they are so handy for attaching things to your boat and when I get to camp I use them for all sorts of things like connecting tarps together 
or attaching different things to my hammock rig. But that's more or less it. Just very simple and minimalistic when it comes to weight. I don't want to have a lot of extra weight with me to pull off these portages. Everything I said serves a specific function and I know exactly why it's with me at all times. And while I'm here, I'll just discuss my Old Town pack and I basically have kept it completely stock. Some people lower the seat. I prefer to keep it at its original height. I have bought some bamboo um, that I was going to make extenders with and, and lower the seat like an inch and a half or two inches. But I found this boat paddles great as is. And I like to have the extra storage space and the capacity to put my legs under there and go to my knees if I ever need to. So as of right now, I'm keeping the seat as is. Other than that, this boat is just stock. I okay, since we just got to take a look at what I do with my boat, specifically my homemade yoke and the different ways I attach things to my boat. Let's look at my backpack method or system that I've been using because without these, obviously it's just each thing together is what makes it possible in my opinion. So I utilize two backpacks. I either use an Osprey 22 liter or an Osprey 33 liter depending upon how many days I'm gone for or what I need to bring, I'll uh, bring the extra capacity. And then the other bag I use is an Oak Creek 30 liter dry bag. So, as you can see, Osprey on the front. And this Oak Creek goes right on my back. properly balanced. It feels very comfortable. I'll clip this hip belt. And then it's really as simple as this, guys. Really nothing to it. Okay, all the gear, my yoke, Everything's nicely attached. The weight is beautiful. And you can see it's very nicely balanced. So I just have to hold it with one arm basically to prevent it from sliding off. But other than that, it is very nice. And it makes portaging my boat about as simple as I think it can be. Okay, now that we've gone through the first two components of my portaging strategy for my Old Town Pack, I wanna show you the third, I'd say, component, which is really my gear list and the items that I've chosen to go light and show you what I have in my pack, why I have it in my pack, and then you'll get a general sense for how light I'm going. And I think that's an important aspect to being able to successfully portage your boat in a single carry. Okay, so as I mentioned, I'm using two packs to pull off my single portages. The first one here is the Osprey 22 liter. We don't have to go through every item in this pack because it changes depending upon exactly how many days I'm gonna be out, where I'm going, the seasonality. In this pack is more of the stuff that I break out when I get to camp. So as I mentioned, this isn't important so much. Uh, to go through, but we are going to go through this one here. So let's take a look at what's in my Oak Creek 30 liter bag. And before we go inside, just some of the things that are on the outside. I carry a 6x8 tarp, okay? This thing is essential in the Adirondacks when all of a sudden a thunderstorm pops up and all of a sudden there's this downpour and you're in the middle of the water or you got to get somewhere really quick to the shore. It's nice to have a tarp that you can drape over your boat and keep as much water out of your boat and off of you as possible. Think of it as almost like a giant umbrella. So I carry this tarp with me. It's always accessible. And in my tarp, I carry my camp sauce, okay? If you need to clear debris on a portage trail, if you want to pick up some firewood, some good firewood you happen to come across on the way, Camp saws are essential to have handy. 
I carry two because they're lightweight. If one of them goes down, I have a replacement and they both work great for different types of wood and different moisture contents. So I like to have both of them with me. Also, I like to carry my coffee mug. So I always have my Hydro Flask coffee mug with me. It goes very nicely on the outside of my Oak Creek 30 liter. Let's break into this and I'll show you what I carry and I'll tell you why I carry it as well. I'll start right here with my cook set. My cook set consists of an MSR pocket rocket, a 500 milliliter pot that I boil all my water in. I always carry an extra isobutane uh, fuel tank with me just in case something goes wrong. Uh, when it comes to meals, I always go really light just like my gear. It's almost always dehydrated food. You can eat really well with dehydrated food now and it simplifies everything so much where all you really need to do is boil some water. If I'm backpacking or paddling, I never go anywhere without my camp shoes, which are just Crocs. They're very comfortable. A day of backpacking or paddling with your wet water shoes on, it's so nice to sit by the campfire with a pair of Crocs. So those always are with me. The next thing in my 30 liter dry bag is what I call my ditty bag. In my ditty bag consists of my water purification system, which is just a Sawyer squeeze. I have a fire steel, I have some paracord, I have some gear ties, a compass, a couple lighters, um, a pocket knife, basically a lot of essential items that I need. The next thing in my bag is my clothes bag. I go light with food, I go light with clothes too. Everything I bring when it comes to clothes has a function and a purpose and it is going to dry quickly. And my layering system makes a lot of sense. Maybe one day I'll make a video about my layering system. But in an eight liter dry bag, inside my other 30 liter dry bag is my clothes. The next item in my backpack is my hammock. I'm a hammock camper. I sleep in a double hammock. It's much more comfortable. I also carry another hammock which is an Eno Sub 7. This is kind of my lounging hammock that I set next to the water. If I want to listen to the loons all night or just relax in the sun or take a nap, here's my spare hammock. Straps are both included in those bags. Since I'm a hammock camper, I'm not traveling with a tent, so I need to have a good tarp. And the tarp I use is called the Chill Gorilla. This tarp is awesome. I don't think they sell this tarp anymore. If you know where I can get it, I'd love to get a couple more just as backup because I really love this tarp. It's lightweight, it's easy to set up, and um, it's big enough to keep a lot of the elements off of you. Because I'm sleeping in a hammock, I utilize a sleep pod system. This is the Outdoor Vitals Airy 20. It's basically a rectangular sleeping bag that cinches on both ends. So you can put your hammock through the middle, cinch the ends down, and you create like a bean pod around your hammock. It creates this nice warm pocket of air. And I'll tell you, you sleep like an absolute baby with this thing. Uh, once again, that's the Outdoor Vitals Aries 20. And I'm actually gonna buy another one as backup because I really like this. If things get a little too cold or it happens to be a warm night, I actually have an alternative sleep system in case the trees are not large enough or I happen to be in some sort of environment where the hammock isn't gonna work. I carry an alternative system which consists of a pad. I can use my sleep pod as a sleeping pad. This is a down quilt. 800 fill down quilt that I use to either supplement my 20 bag when it's really cold or I'll put down my sleeping pad in my hammock and just sleep under this quilt in the middle of the summer and as long as the buzz the bugs aren't so bad oh it's so comfortable and I love it that the last thing in my 30 liter dry bag is just my camp pillow as I told you I like to go really light and 
just carry the essential items to make my camping experience comfortable, but also my portaging experience comfortable. You don't want to be carrying extra weight for no reason. So make sure that your system makes sense. Make sure that the gear you're carrying makes sense. You know how to use it. It's functioning properly so that when you're in the field, nothing goes wrong. And if it does go wrong, you have a backup or a contingency plan. All of those tips are essential, in my opinion, to single portaging in the Adirondack Mountains, getting from pond to pond or water body to water body with the least amount of effort possible. Okay, now since we just went through the contents of my 30 liter dry bag, I'm just gonna quickly go through some general contents of the pack I'm wearing on the front, my Osprey 22 liter. As I mentioned before, this changes depending upon my trip, depending upon seasonality, but some of the things that are almost always in here, number one, rain gear, number two, sun protection, mosquito protection, food and water, snacks, maybe some extra batteries for my camera. Um, I also have some spare clothes that I may want to get to throughout the day, maybe a, a, an extra layer or a long sleeve to keep me uh, protected from the sun. But as I mentioned, it's not important to go through every item in this because it changes quite frequently depending upon exactly what I'm going to be up to. Okay, everyone, that's the portage system that I'm currently using for my Old Town Pack Canoe. It consists of my homemade yoke, my backpacks being utilized on the front and my back, and the gear that I've selected to make it as light as possible. Uh, please leave me some comments. Let me know what you guys do to, to portage your boat. What gear are you using? What gear would you never Adirondack canoe trip without? And as a reminder, over 90% of the people that are watching my videos are not subscribed. So if you haven't subscribed to Adirondack Adventures, please give my channel a subscribe and like the videos if you, if you enjoy the content. And once again, thanks everybody for watching Adirondack Adventures. There's many more to come.